just in case you missed it, it's the top five sports talkers of the day. Now, it's time for Dan Barrero's Top 5 at 5, driven by Borden Volvo, America's most awarded Volvo retailer. By the way, the inbox, uh, Dr. Dan's inbox is making its return today. It's scheduled to return at 530. If you'd like to text Garzy, JG, at KFAN.com. Still time to get in. Yeah, we may be a little bit light because I have not probably uh, uh, milked it quite as much as I needed to. So in any case, uh, let's get to the top five now. With an apology and belated condolences to Lance Ito because he's, <laughs> he's alive. He's alive. Okay. His wife, Margaret, Sadly, died in 2021. Okay, Mrs. Ito. Okay. Yes. Or Ms. I don't know what it was. But. So Margaret York, his spouse, died in 2021. Lance Ito, age 73 years old. Wow. Age 73 years old. How, uh, how so, old were the Kardashians? That Were they even alive then? Some of them would have some been. Some of them would have been alive, yeah. but like kids, right? They yes. would have been children. Because I was 12. They're a little younger than me. Okay. So I'm trying to do the math. Which you know is not good. No, neither for neither of us. So Ito would have been about my age now when he was presiding over that trial. He would have been early forties. Think about essentially. it. Essentially, think about early it. to mid forties. Yeah, well, he couldn't have been a judge that long. That's that's uh, a yeah. Big case. I, I he he came under a lot of scrutiny as well uh, about whether he kind of at times lost control. Um, and I think at Who times he that? did, but that's the thing. I mean, how how it's it's a circus. How how do you, where do you begin to what what judge could have been able to ride herd over an unprecedented American, you know, Barnum and Bailey like circus? Speaking of circus, that could describe the Wolves' fourth quarter last night in Denver, Colorado. I think the game was tied with nine and a half minutes left. And then Joker said, uh, the job is done. We go home now, like you said after the finals. <laughs> yes. It's over. Uh, your job is done. You're going home now. I think the, the Wolves have the Hawks here on Friday night. But the Joker had 41 points. It was a it was pretty systematic and clinical fourth quarter for Denver. Well, as they, they ascend to the top spot, go ahead. I was going to say, even part of the, the, the sticky wicket for the Wolves was even while he was resting yeah. at the start of the fourth quarter, Denver was gaining. That's right. And, you know, the bit is the obvious. Uh, you got to take advantage when he is off the court. And we've we've kidded about, well, the game we won, we, 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 we suckered him into just worrying about scoring. Um, there were times where it looked like that was happening again last night. The problem last night was he ended up doing everything. Yeah. He, he did score 40, like you say, or 41. And he still distributed masterfully. Eleven rebounds, seven assists. As only he can he can do. And they had other guys that went. They did. I mean, Murray yeah. was good. You yeah. know, Porter plays incredible against the Wolves. Michael Porter. Who's Jr. the guy off the bench? The the the, the Vince Carter. The, yeah, the white guy who looked like Vince Carter. Christian Braun. It's unbelievable. It was ridiculous. He's changing hands in the air no, to know. get a dunk against Rudy Gobert. That's where at thirty thousand feet, I I turn the TV <laughs> off. I said, if Christian Braun's going to clown on us, like, we got to have some pride here. Like, we need Cat back, too. Like, what are we doing? Uh, yeah. Like, we're going to let that dude dunk on yeah. you? Like, multiple he did it times? Twice. Yeah, two, was, two times in a row. Yeah, it was not good. No. Not great. So, Denver's going to get the top seed in the West. That was a huge game because there's only a couple left. San Antonio Davey might be, you know, all they have to do is lose one. If we win two. Yeah. All we got to get from Denver is losing one, but you're right. They're both very winnable games, and I think Denver's pretty serious about finishing this thing off. Yes, and we have Atlanta Friday night here, and then the Phoenix Suns come here on Sunday as well. They're probably still going to be messing around for their playoff positioning as they're in the There's, top six no right doubt. now. And we still got to worry. I mean, we could fall to three yep. if it matters to me, but I don't know. Maybe the distinction's not that great between two. I'd, I'd feel annoyed if we dropped all the way to I three. I agree. When you've been number one exactly. all year long, that's it. you need to at least finish in second place. We obviously know about Denver's ascension and they're the defending champs. Mm -hmm. They're really good. Um, Phoenix is in the seventh spot right now. New Orleans is in the sixth. Um, so Phoenix is still trying to figure out how to get themselves into that top six. All these teams are. No one wants to mess with the play-in for obvious reasons. Because all of these teams, for the most part, I don't think Sacramento does, but you can make an argument for all the teams as you did kind of in the first segment. Nine of these ten teams believe they can win a title. Yeah. Whether or they're delusional or not. Yeah. Because they have guys that have done it. That's right. In the case of the Lakers and Warriors, Kevin Durant with Phoenix, or they're a younger upstart team. 
like the Pelicans, like the Thunder, like the Wolves. So it's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy. Where do they want to go? Mitch Lawrence told us yesterday the odds makers have us with the fourth best chance to come out of the West, even though we, as of yesterday, had a chance to be, and technically still have a chance to be, the number one seed. Ahead of us was Denver. Yeah, the Clippers, I'm Ahead sure. Ahead of us was the Clippers. Ahead of us was Oklahoma City. Okay. How's that feel? I mean, they're they're Not no, great. they've got no more playoff equity than we do. Why should they be ahead of us? I actually think we should be ahead of them. In all honesty, I think the Wolves have a better chance to make a run than Oklahoma City. But anyway, you were I, saying. I think you're probably right. Uh, Quasi at Open Mensa met the media today. We had uh, Kevin o, or Kevin O'Connell. We had Kevin Seifert on to talk about that. He was there. One of the questions Kevin asked Quasi. Is it possible that you don't draft a quarterback super high? Have you played out that scenario in your scenario game of hypotheticals, Quasi? You have to be ready for everything. Um, you know, I, I don't know that. I think it's a very deep class. Um, so, you know, but I do think you have to be ready for every scenario. If there's elite players at premium positions on the board, um, I don't think you're supposed to, to reach or force or anything like that. That's just not what I believe all the while understanding that that is the most important position in the sport. So it's, it's it's calculating both those things at the same time. He also talked extensively about you can't be afraid of the risk of taking the big swing. You can't let, you can't be worried. You can't be worried about what might happen negatively, the outcome that might happen negatively. He's right about that. You have to be able to take the swing and yes, that's I agree totally with the general manager in that regard. Anything else from what Quazy had to say well, today? Well, I, I think the overarching conclusion that Seifert had after today's session is that the, the 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 Vikings are not likely to do what Rick Spielman predicted they probably will, which is to overpay because of the belief that you're not overpaying in the Spielman scenario to get the allegedly best rated quarterback or even the second best rated quarterback or even the third rated quarterback you're giving away the farm to get the fourth guy presumably jj mccarthy if this goes the way it's conventionally supposed to and that's what's interesting is 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 seaford's conclusion right because there should be limits now again you're back to but if you think jj mccarthy is going to be a franchise quarterback what do you care uh, I don't know, but everybody's got a price. And we're back to, I think, the possibility that the Wolves, uh, God, if the Wolves on the brain right now, the Vikings simply, you know, stay at 11 and they take panics there. But as we also talked about with Seifert, you got to factor in the possibility of somebody jumping up ahead of you uh, to grab him. If you've decided Penix is, is really good, we think he's sneaky good. We don't have to overpay uh, to move up to get them too much. So let's just not overthink this. Take them at 11, get another really good player at 23 as well. You cannot, if you believe in Penix, in my opinion, you cannot hope that he lasts till 23. Yeah. You cannot, even if you think on a value level, that's the way he should be valued. Because if you end up with nobody out of this group of quarterbacks that he says we like a lot of them, Right. And then you got a real problem because I'm not even convinced next. I think next year is going to be worse when it comes to quarterback options. And we just don't know, right? And we, we just, don't, right. We, there's so much that we don't know yet about next year's class. Uh, in St. Paul right now, Boston University leading Denver 1 0 with 10 minutes to go in the second period. That's semifinal number one in the Frozen Four. Later tonight, Boston College and Michigan will tip off in St. Paul. You can hear that game right here on the fan. Frozen Four action, thanks to Westwood One, is on the plus as we speak. We will join it following fan on demand on the air tonight with Boston College and Michigan. What time do the Gophers play? They are out. Oh. They don't play. Oh, They lost to oh. Boston, who's winning right now 1-0. Okay. Bryson DeChambeau is your leader right now at Augusta, in Augusta. Seven under par today. He leads Scotty Scheffler by one. Scheffler two shots clear of Danny Willett and a host of others. Tiger Woods is, is he lurking? Even par. Tiger was lurking. He was one under for a minute. Oh. 
Now he's even par. Oh. Um, I think through six. Rory McIlroy is one. Is under he going to finish the round on the day? That's the hope. Yeah, that's always the hope. Okay, you got to start what you finish. Rory McIlroy is one under par. See if there's any other names that you might be interested in. Xander Shoffley is uh, looks like even par. Brooks Kepka was one over par. John Rahm now one over par as well. As he just bogeyed eighteen, it looks like. Um, on what started as a rainy day in Augusta, Georgia. Now it's just windy. What about Lumpy? Well, it's Lumpy. Uh, I miss Lumpy. We all do. We all do. Yeah, for sure. We all do. Well, he's not, he's not gone. No, I know. <laughs> you're making it sound like he's... <laughs> Neither's Lancito. Come on, man. Neither's Lancito. Yeah, you're, you're, you're killing putting, off a lot of people today. I'm putting today. everybody in the grave. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Uh, let's straddle. Let's do it. Uh, and we'll get to the inbox. Like I said, email Garzy, JG at KFAN.com for the bottom of the hour. Ow. The Miller Lite Vikings draft party is back at U.S. Bank Stadium on April 25th. And you can get your tickets now to party on the field while taking in the first round of the NFL draft. Very easy to get your tickets today at Vikings.com slash draft party. And tune into your home for draft coverage, KFAN, each day leading up to the draft for your chances to win your way in as our draft coverage on the fan is presented locally by Pep's Draft House Pizza. Uh, for the record, we probably should uh, remind folks that weren't paying attention that in the civil case, O.J. Simpson was found liable. I don't know how many million. Was it 30 million? I don't remember like the 33, amount. 33, 33 million dollars. I don't know how much of that uh, money um, ever got to where it was supposed to get to. Um, involving the Goldman family, I'm not sure. But uh, that lower threshold there, you know, it's not like beyond a reasonable doubt, like in a criminal case. And then let's not forget also, he ends up spending, was it nine years in prison? Yeah. For this this botched, what was it, a hotel He was basically trying robbery? to get back some his own, of his, yeah, stuff, his stuff. right. But he brought a bunch of guys <laughs> with guns. It, it was one of the most bizarre stories one can imagine, and I think he was paroled after. I think he, I think the original sentence was like thirty three years, I think, and then he ended up. I believe he ended up uh, serving about uh, nine years as uh, as well, and then he he didn't really like the last few years. He didn't really do that many interviews, did he? He did an occasional one, a couple of podcasts. He would show up at uh, out of nowhere, but he he didn't do a lot of interview stuff. I don't believe he did a lot of videos of himself commenting on different current yeah. events, which nobody asked for. Um, you know what's interesting? I, I just noticed via uh, X that your guy Ray Lewis is trending. Oh no! And what people are saying is, well, you guys are all hammering away at OJ, but <laughs> what about Ray Lewis? And I can recall literally the day on this show that, well, I shouldn't say it was on this show. It was before the show that when I was watching, and I don't know if it was like the, would it have been the opening statement? It might have been the opening statement by the prosecutor in the Lewis case. That Or, or maybe it was in pre-trial stuff. Because I don't know, did he ever actually come to trial? Whatever it was. And this is the prosecutor, remember, okay? And I can remember vividly saying to myself and mentioning it on the air later that afternoon, they got nothing. Now, that's not me saying Ray Lewis had nothing to do with that incident. This was right after the Super Bowl, Super Bowl I was at in Atlanta, right? Uh, but I I never thought, unlike the, the OJ case, I never thought they had anything nailed down. There was There was no there there in his particular case and i think a lot of the suspicion in his case was that he was around it in the vicinity of it near it maybe even you know precipitated some aspect of it but not necessarily that he was in, involved with murder but that's what's uh, that's how x works you know that's that's yep. how these things uh work doesn't particularly surprise you does it it does not um should we mention people speaking of x that um, it sounds like cat's going to play tomorrow yeah the um he's been upgraded to questionable the belief is he's going to play Definitely tomorrow, even though it's not definite, it's believed definite against Atlanta home game. And then the question is, if he plays tomorrow and the Phoenix game means something in terms of positioning, uh, the Wolves are interested in participating in it to that extent. 
would he play in that one too? I mean, is this one game the idea of let's just get him out there, you know, just test the knee a little bit, right? Or is it no? Now he's back, and we're going to play him, and we're going to if he if 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 everything goes right, whatever minute restriction he might be on, if any, that's what I'm wondering too. That's um, my next question. Then you play. Then no, we'll go ahead and uh, play him on Sunday. The Wolves are going to have a little time, obviously, because they're waiting. If they're a two, if you're a one or a two, well, regardless, you're going to wait because the play in activity is what starts the week. Um, and you know, there's already um, debate about. Well, yeah, it's better to not be in the play in. On the other hand, uh, or or put it this way, that is there a disadva- is there an advantage to being the three seed in that if you're the three seed, you don't have to wait to find out who you're going to play. You know you're playing the six, right? Whoever that is, yep. You can start scouting. You can start preparing yourself, etc. So could they. if you're a one, right? If you're a one and a two, you sort of got to wait because you're not going to know who you're going to end up playing until those games um, eliminate two teams and leave two teams standing to 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 end up being the number 7 and number 8 seeds, correct? That's how it's supposed to work. I'm uh given how well scouted the NBA is, I think they'll be fine either way. I think so? And I think whatever happens in the if, if the 6 seed can do it, the 3 seed can do it yeah. and vice versa. And I just love that these are the conversations we get to have because typically around this time, yeah. I mean, you and I sat to, next to each other for the Mark Madsen seven three point game, <laughs> right? As we or eight three pointer game is what they were trying to tank and get extra ping pong balls to I think get like the sixth pick. It wasn't like they no, were they, yeah. they weren't in the Wemby sweepstakes no. in like two thousand eight, whenever that was. So I am um, who did that end I, up being? I don't remember. That was a guard. I can was see it Randy him. Foy? I think it was fourth quarter Foy. I think that's exactly. Foy? I think you're right. I think it was Foy. That's who I had in my head. I think that's got to be right. Yeah, that sounds kind of right. Yeah, that didn't work very well for us. He was it, okay. He was okay, but yeah. he, there, there was he wasn't nothing Brandon Roy transform- No, and then when by the time we got him, remember? Yes. Remember we were in Mankato, and we got Brandon Roy that's on the phone. Right. Yes. I, was, I mean, he was such a a, a great guy he and was. a good interview. And, you know, healthy, a really good player. Great player. But, of course, by the time we got him, it lasted, I think, like three minutes. He had Didn't a it? couple of quarters just, left in, yeah, in those that, knees. That was it. But then there, there, wasn't, there wasn't much else uh, as well. And all the games on the fan, like I said. That, that's the beauty of it because with the wild out, there's no competition uh, on our airwaves. So uh, all Wolves playoff games are scheduled to be on the, uh, the, jug- the 100.3, 100,000 watt FM a juggernaut as well. Somebody has suggested, given um, how rarely we've been on the same show lately, that there's almost something experimental about us being back together and that the show should be called Barrero and Avant Garde. <laughs> Get it? I do. Barrero and Avant Garde. I don't think that's in the works. No, it's not bad, though. It's a good attempt by it's, a listener to it's try nice. to be kind of pithy and, yes. and clever. They're too. working for us. Um, Meanwhile, we've got a, a lot of uh, NBA researchers working for us free, including 763 guy Jared, who writes, there is a small chance that the West seeds 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 can all finish with a record of 47 and 35, which would incite a tiebreaker of team records against all the other tied teams. That would be the tiebreaker of tiebreakers. Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine. So five teams technically still have a chance to all finish with a record of 47 and 35. Think about it. That's true. You looked it up? You, you confirmed it? I'm lo- well, I'm just you, you did a, a fact check? You've got two of them now. Yeah, it seems like it. Now, I don't know if some of these teams are playing each other and, yeah, and right. results are, might vary there, yeah. but... That would be something. That happened in the Big Ten a couple of years ago. There was like four teams yeah. that tied for first, I think. It was mm-hmm. something crazy. By the way, are we going to get, is uh, is uh, your guy Fleck going to get this uh, uh, this this edge rusher extraordinaire that, that who was supposed to come here originally or had talked about coming here from maybe? From LSU? Yeah. Is he coming? I don't know. He's oh, mid- you know. I don't know. He went into the portal today. He had, did, been no sor- your sources aren't telling you anything? I haven't asked any of them, to be honest. Oh. Uh. I'm kind of portaled out, like at the moment. Okay, there's a lot of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, in the I would assume a nice addition. I think so. It seems. I think. But I, is he too good? I mean, is he going to end up at like you know Michigan or? But if he's Ohio leaving State. LSU, like, oh, that's a good point. Why do we LSU, know? Well, I, I don't blame him. It's probably because of the annoying coach. Who is the coach? Uh, the, the the old LSU, the Brian old Notre Dame guy, Brian, Brian Kelly, Kelly, the guy with yeah. the phony Southern accent. 
his family. Remember that? Yeah, of course. How, it was good great. Was, how good was that? It was great. I had to think about it for a second. I forgot what his name was. Yeah, Brian Kelly. I think yeah. that's the guy. Um, all right, so still time to get in your um, letters to Garzy, jg at kfan.com. We've got the inbox coming up. Dr. Dan's inbox uh, coming up in just moments, and uh, we'll uh, prepare for that in the uh, upcoming minute. Head over to our contest page where you can register for your shot of the pair of passes to an early screening of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, the new action comedy telling the story of the first special forces organization that was formed in World War II. KFAN.com, keyword contest to enter. The um, OJ related texts coming. Bradshaw and Brian KFN text line 64686. We've had some uh, excellent callbacks and um, not only observations, but recollections for various people who are, you know, in our audience, various ages of what they remember about the OJ case and uh, the murder itself, which took place, murders, in, I believe it was June of 1994 followed by the infamous bronco chase we've uh i think we're a couple weeks at least uh away from our last inbox so we said it's thursday so why not make it today it's time for our dr dan's inbox letters. oh we get letters we get your letters every Every Thursday, usually 4.30 or so, JG at KFAN.com. And like Dan said, there's still time to get your submission in. We've got Sponsored a, by? Nobody yet. Nobody oh. yet. Always uh, available. Did we mention in the top five, or did you, that the uh, Twins afternoon affair in Detroit was postponed because of rain? I did not mention that. It's worth mentioning now. Uh, yeah, Twins, red hot, finally got a victory over the Dodgers. That's right. Yesterday afternoon, we're supposed to start a, I want to say, it's a, is it a seven-game road trip or even longer? Against the red hot surging Tigers, but it was uh, rained out today. So that's why no Twins result. We will have time to get in any late entries as we carry this forward. Got a good subset here, but we can always use more. Dear Dr. Dan, smoke screens, war rooms, draft boards, and culture of collaboration. Our intentionality, optionality, and analytical approach is cooking. Uh. In two short weeks, I will tell you what we were really thinking. But for now, we like them all. And has been said before, some play chess while other plays checkers. Dr. Dan, which game do you think we're playing? K. Adolfo Mensa. Oh, my God. I, I, Dr. Dan has no I- earthly idea. I don't want to assume the worst because uh, uh, this is the, 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 the draft record has been spotty, but it's early. And this is, when you're talking about the quarterback move it tra- almost transcends any other move that you make. So, am I? Is Doctor Dan ruling out the possibility that that Quasi and and company could nail this? No, I I don't. I'm not automatically pessimistic that we're not capable of handling it. Um, Doctor Dan's glad he doesn't have to make the call because it is tricky. It's complicated, and to a certain extent, as we said, the minute the 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 Vikings decided that we're not playing with Kirk anymore. Um, they boxed themselves in to a certain extent. And does that mean you can't play checkers and that to a degree you're forced to play chess because you got to come out of this draft? You have to come out of this draft with a quarterback, one that's taken in the first round? Yeah, I think to a certain degree they are boxed in. Now, as we've talked about for months, if you're doing this right, you don't mind being boxed in. Because you've already done your due diligence on all the quarterbacks, and you said, we ain't lying to ourselves. There are one, two, three, four, five quarterbacks that we are intrigued by, to varying degrees, but all that intrigue us enough that we're willing to accept the possibility that we get our fifth choice of those quarterbacks, especially if the fifth choice means we do not have to give up the farm in order to get them. That's the stuff that's got to be done, and that's the legitimate question. Did they think that far ahead? Did they think, not just accurately, but carefully, are they lying to themselves because they box themselves in that they like a quarterback more than they do? The list is endless. Year after year, 
Guys who are going into the draft, various experts say intriguing. Got a chance to be a franchise quarterback. Don't sleep on this guy. He's better than you think. Looking for the right situation. Exactly. More times than not, they fail. Now, is it they fail because they're lousy? Or do they fail because the infrastructure around them is so limited because generally horrible teams are the ones making the pick? I, I, I don't know. But it's it's a complicated deal. It's an important deal. And it's possible Dr. Dan's starting to lose his nerve because for a long time I was in the group and said, you gotta, if you got to pay, overpay, you got to overpay. I might be... More willing. Oh, you're more softening. Open and, You've and evolved. Evolved into don't oh, don't overpay ridiculously for the fourth guy. Take Penix. I don't know about Nick's. Some people I haven't watched Nick's enough yeah. to have an opinion on him. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, 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 more and more. If 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 you tell me because there's something to what Spielman says that you think about overpaying. Like okay, three ones. And probably another pick for the top quarterback or the second, t- you know, best quarterback in the draft. Okay, yeah, maybe. But three number ones. El- uh, what are we right now? Eleven. Eleven and twenty-three. Twenty-three, and our number one next year, and probably a number four the year after that. For the fourth quarterback to move up five spots or seven spots, I do think there's re- that does give me a little bit of pause. And, it, and it, part of it is, again, because McCarthy is likely going to be that guy. And I We're back to J.J. being there, right? It's been th- yeah, it's, a it's moved winding around road. Yeah. I've always thought it was J.J. Uh, but I think, it's more, I think it continues to be likely that uh, he is indeed. The, even though, I mentioned this yesterday, the sentiment around the campfire is the QB that the head coach wants to spoon with is Drake May. And... I hope I I don't want us to end up with Drake May. I'll be honest with you. I don't. I'm in that group, but I don't think we're gonna have a chance to get Drake May unless again, whoever's picking third says well, we think he's a little overrated too. We're gonna surprise the world. We're gonna go with JJ McCarthy. You mentioned Kirk Cousins. He greets travelers in the domestic South Terminal. I think as you go up the big escalator mm-hmm. in the Atlanta airport, major mural huh? on the video board. Welcome to Atlanta, Kirk Cousins. Oh, we're happy for him. That's what Did I... Did you see his quote the other day? That's what I tweeted out. He's going to do everything he can to yes. help bring us... It's like, well, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, uh, that, that's the idea, isn't it? Is that supposed to be like some emotional pledge that's supposed to arouse people? I guess if you're in Atlanta, it will because it's new. Yeah. And because compared to the quarterbacks they've used the last few years, yep. Cousins is obviously a significant upgrade and all the nonsense is fresh. So they're probably willing to to, to, to swallow this swill um, until they find out that he's going to get them one playoff victory, and that's going to be the extent. He wants his kids to remember him as a Falcon. That's great. We're happy. He for also him. said that. We're very happy. It's very one him. of us for sponsoring yeah. you on Kirko. It's time yeah. for yeah, yeah, it is. Dan's Inbox. Letters. Oh, we get letters. By the way, if I had to travel through the Atlanta airport a lot, yeah. I wouldn't travel. It's a tough one. It was a disaster last night. Just getting from like one terminal just to every, another? It is everywhere. Oh. Bad signage, oh. bad drainage. It was raining. I know. Our, our airport's superior. <laughs> That's just facts. Okay. That's unbelievable. I was, when I landed in Minneapolis, there was just a sense of calm because I, I knew it was going to be an easy process. Everything was slow. It was, it was bad. It was very bad. I know. You like it here. I do like it here. Dear Dr. Dan... We proudly contributed to some memorable record-setting squads during our time in T-Territory, the Bomba Squad, and the 2023 M-Twins. So we know firsthand the hard hit rate, L angle, and exit velo are all that matters. Chicks dig the long ball, and who doesn't love the dong gong? As B. Ruth once said, never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. While we have moved on, we are certainly watching and wishing the boys well in their fearless quest to break last year's strikeout record. They're off to an impressive start. Yeah. M. Sano and Jay Gallo. <laughs> Maybe they're going to have the last word. I don't know. Or the last laugh in any case. Yeah, we are early striking out at a dangerous ratio. We had Corey Provis on a couple days ago. He does not think by the end of the season um, it's going to be anywhere near as bad as it's been. And I don't even know now, is, is this still part of our 
philosophy, we believe in feast or famine, or is it just we've got a lot of people who strike out a lot still? I think it's that. I don't know what it but is. But they attract people that strike and out they, a lot they because of to. their philosophy, Yeah, apparently that's uh, part of the deal as well. Um, all Dr. Dan knows is we finally got a clutch hit with the man in scoring position in this last game. That was Buxton, right? And yeah, I mean, they stopped the game. They gave him the game ball. I don't know if you saw that. There was a ceremony. Uh, Rocco trotted out. That's nice. To the field and presented him That's with the really ball, nice. which is impressive, That's I special. thought. That's very special. Very special. Uh, our defense was sterling yesterday. We, uh, who's the superstar that died? The guy who just uh, got. Did trouble for didn't, gambling? Didn't miss $16 million being pilfered from his bank account. Uh, Shohei Otani. Otani. We got him down with a great relay throw from uh, our shortstop uh, at home plate. That saved the victory for us. Nothing like a great defensive play or two for Dr. Dan. Did you see, by the way, that Otani, the feds confirm, is officially the victim in the in the gambling case? Yeah, so they that? say. Oh, you think they're throwing No, the I, I think it's possible. I'm still just gobsmacked that... I know athletes have been caught before, but it's like... It happened to Garnett. Garnett lost a bunch of money. But isn't the amount $16 million? Isn't that what we've de- 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 determined? He stole more than $16 million over two years. Remember when it was four and a half mil? I know. That's what now it is. It's $16, $16 million, and he didn't notice it. That's when you know you're pretty wealthy. Yeah. And you're not having any problem paying your bills. And you might need a better translator. Or a nicer one. Well, yeah, that's true, You might too. want to do a better vetting process, yeah. Glenn Taylor. Speaking of Glenn Taylor... It's time for Dr. Dan's Inbox. Letters. We get your letters every day. Dear Dr. Dan, I wanted to quickly clarify my intentions on what we plan to do with the team that we all love, the M. Timberwolves. What G. Taylor said about my partner M. Laurie and I sacrificing competitiveness to save money could not be further from the truth. We will absolutely be keeping A. Edwards on the team, and we're excited to be surrounding him with a group of hungry players who can't wait to win a title. We've spoken with N. E. B. and I. Ryder, <laughs> confirmed that their knees will allow them to come out of retirement for another year or two. Yeah. Jay Flynn has been hitting on 56% of his threes on his driveway hoop, and that's just a sample of who we have in mind. We also plan to bring in D. Milicic as an assistant coach to preach hustle, something he excelled at during his illustrious career. Please let your audience know we've got this, Dr. Dan. Get the howl towels ready, A. Rodriguez. Well, I the only bit of uh, vacation FOMO I suffered, which I readily admitted uh, when I called in that first day, was this story, which is so rich with opportunity to analyze, opine, not to mention mock, and ridicule. And I don't know about you. I don't know. I know you were on in and out for several days, and I'm sure you got into it a lot and what your view of it was. But I am having a very difficult time rooting for either party. It's tough. I I think both of them are rippable for different reasons. Now, ultimately, again, if... They don't have the goods financially, right? Um, That's a problem. That's a significant problem. It doesn't mean, however, that just because Glenn Taylor has the money that everybody should celebrate the likelihood that he's back in charge forever because he has not, I repeat, not significantly distinguished himself as owner of this club. I don't want to go through the lists of missteps, of just asininity that this organization was involved in. The, the secret Joe Smith contract uh, signed by, I think, uh, Glenn Taylor while the IV drip he was attached to him before the surgery. <laughs> the, the ongoing <laughs> list of, of just, it's, it's, it's yeah. endless. So I, I don't root for that at all. Um, and there is something disingenuous about Taylor suggesting all these guys cared about was the marble in the owner's suite when clearly... Tim Conley doesn't come here without their aggressive approach. Now, allegedly, they're fibbing, or A-Rod is fibbing, when he says Taylor had no interest or no willingness to to do the Rudy Gobert deal. Uh, I've been told that wasn't the case either. So there's there's nonsense flying back and forth Glenn here. Glenn doesn't get involved in player stuff. No, I don't think so all that much. I mean, he might have had an opinion. Contract, yeah, he doesn't right. tell him what to do. But but again, I I, I, I think... The problem here's here's the Glenn credibility problem. 
He should have kept it at they didn't do the deal by the dates that were set in stone. They opened the door to me doing what I'm doing. But when he then starts bringing up, well, they didn't even really seem all that interested. I went ahead and I went ahead and you know wrote the check for the marble, but I you know I didn't really particularly like it. And then now we get the leakage, obviously coming from his side, on well they're gonna they're gonna, gonna slash the payroll, which as Johnny Athletic told us yesterday in uh, a bonus appearance, that's not necessarily true. What was laid out there in terms of where the the the, the, the they were going to be vis a vis the payroll next season as well. So there's that to me is the is the Glenn credibility issue. When he starts going through other things, that tells me he has regretted almost from the moment he entered into this agreement that he did it. And as the team got better and had its best season yet, basically since the Garnett the the MB three years. year right in twenty, 20 years. years he he and 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 knowing the price was a relative bargain. It's bugging him, and that that's really got as much to do with this as anything. But hard to have much sympathy for a Rod and 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 the other guy. If indeed they've been playing with doing it with mirrors and or left the door open, they should know if they by now they have to know he's having buyers or sellers remorse anyway. So in, if you're in that position, you don't give G Taylor the opening to do exactly what he has done. So there, I don't think there's anybody to root for here. And I, I ain't rooting for the local angle, and I'm not automatically rooting against the, the interloper with the rather spotty history. I just think that's too simple for me when the local guy has been at times a terrible owner yeah, of this team, that's why terrible I, steward of this team. Yeah, which is why I think I, by default, like many fans do, I'm voting for the new guys. I, I, you know what I mean? I, Just, I understand it. Like I absolutely do. And they, the Tim Conley they thing's did important. bring some energy. There's no doubt that they brought some, a little bit different to a place that seemed a bit tired. And the T. Conley part is important, and I didn't bring it up in top five, and I probably should have. The revelation by Johnny's guy, Sham Sharania, that he has a out in his contract after this year as president of basketball come operations. Yesterday. I missed or, that. Well, not yesterday. It came out this morning, I think. Sham Sharania, that Tim Conley Should has I text Conley right now? out in his contract. Say, how's your out? Um, that And as I have the sound bite. Maybe you want to play it next segment? I'll give you the whole sound bite next segment. Yeah. Um, where he kind of exp- where he talks about it and talks about how the ownership part might factor in and then says... So he could leave, or they could rip the whole thing up, and he could sign a brand new extension. He kind of leaves the door open to both. I'm texting Conley right now. You are not going to invoke, is that the right word? The out in your contract. What do you mean? Are you? Can I guess his response? What do you think it's going to be? I'm at my kids' AAU practice. Right now. <laughs> That's probably true. It's going to be something, something like that. Yeah. What do you call, yeah. Yeah. I can't even I can't invoke even, yeah. what we're eating tonight. That's it's going it. to be some He'll family do a Shecky, cheap shot. Or Shecky Green comic deflection. line out of it deflection. deflection. Yeah, you're right. That's probably yeah. true. We'll probably see who's true. right. Yeah. I'll do a couple more it's here. It's time for Dr. Dan's Inbox. Dr. Phil uh, from St. Michael wonders whether the same people who vetted Otani's interpreter are on the committee that installed our first high commissioner. <laughs> By the way, have we ever, have we, has, has a new one been hired? We have, has a new one been hired or are we still vetting? I haven't, I mean, you've asked Kessler about it a couple of times and I don't think we've had any resolution. Yeah. You know who I put in charge of finding the new high commissioner? The Minneapolis City Council. They'll, they'll They're t- locked in. They'll take care of it. They're locked in. They'll, they won't. They, there's no chance they'll bungle it. Anyway, sorry. Dear Dr. Dan, let me get this straight. Your producer, Jay Gard, just got back from Augusta, Georgia, and the Masters right after being at the Final Four. Who does he think he is? Me? If he sleeps for the next three days, I'll be forced to file suit for copyright infringement. Stick to tennis and get your own bit, Gard. Jay Feinstein. Wow, Jay Feinstein. That was uh, that was very very well played. By the way, this this is unrelated, kind of, but I'll ask you. So, what do you make of these this musical chairs in college men's college basketball? People moving around, like the players or coaches? Coaches in this okay. case, coaches 
Eric Musselman is this is official now, right? Because this happened while I was gone. USC. Yes. He's at US Southern Cal, not South Carolina. Correct. And John Calipari is replacing. I mean, what are the odds that at some point, here's what's going to happen. Looking into my crystal ball. Yeah. John Calipari is going to replace Eric Musselman at the University of Arkansas. And I don't know who that leaves Kentucky with at this point. Well, because a lot of coaches have said no, including Scott Drew, yeah, the I Baylor saw that. coach who flew his family to Lexington to and, and check then, out the city, and essentially. Then what happened? He got bored with it right away? Well, I don't even think he was there. Oh. I think from what I've followed, they had a private plane that just included his family and his wife and kids basically drove around. Wow. To get a feel for the place and see if they wanted to live there, and they eventually stay at Waco. I mean, with both Muss and Cal Perry, certainly Cal Perry, it's soft landing. It's we, yeah, it's time. fresh voice. It's soft landing. It's, I'm gonna I'm gonna be they're, they're gonna genuflect for me in a way that they'd stop genuflecting in Lexington. That's a big part of it with him for sure. He was feeling unloved. And with the Musselman thing, I'm guessing he's thinking, "Have I hit my ceiling here?" Yeah. In that, and he had he had a dreadful year it wasn't this good. year. But after, what did he take him like the Elite Eight twice or the Sweet Sixteen? It was 16? at least the Sweet Sixteen twice. And maybe I think won the Elite Eight, eight at least once. Yeah, out of nowhere, they hadn't been a factor at all. And I'm guessing his family is going to enjoy Los Angeles more than perhaps Fayetteville. That's a huge factor. My sources say. I would a, I would assume huge. I've never factor. been to Fayetteville, but I think LA. I have flown. No, I've been to Fayetteville. I've attended yeah. a wedding. In Fayetteville, in fact, Fayetteville. Good wedding. From my old Dallas days. Yeah, I was. It was that was a controversial one. It was a good one. But I, I don't, don't want to go into all I the don't details. Ask. I, yeah, I, I don't, was not going to ask. You don't really want to know. <laughs> not, nobody exactly does. Exactly. None of us do. We just want to move on. It's my own fault. There was some funky stuff there. But yeah, the uh, well, the Cal thing. I mean, Kentucky couldn't fire him. I mean, he had a $32 million That's buyout. True. He had a, essentially a lifetime contract. Well, they're relieved, right? Because now they're yeah, out from that. Yeah, and it was a good run there for him. Yeah, I mean, he wins the title, yeah. and now it's obviously not been great the no. last few years. Right. But you got that. Um, let me do one more here. A couple more. It's time for Dr. Dan's Inbox. Letters. Oh, we get letters. We get your letters every day. Dear Dr. Dan, why is everyone all scared about who we're going to have to play? Nobody's worried about S. Close out in Anaheim, D. Green in the Bay, or K. Durant out in the desert. Mm. Okay, maybe K. Durant, but I'm 22 years old, Dr. Dan. Facing me on two, three nights rest consistently is going to be hell for people like this. We ain't going nowhere. Believe that. Cat coming back. A. Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> He's been really good most of the time that uh, Cat was out. No question. He was not very good in the fourth quarter last night. Now, he puts it on the basis of, look, man, every they, every every time I tried to turn the corner, they had somebody on me, so I had to move the ball. He's not wrong, and other people missed open shots. There were lots of open shots missed in yep. the fourth quarter of the game. Uh, you'd still like to hope that somehow he could be more inventive or the coach could be more inventive about opening up the court for him. Did he score in the fourth quarter? I don't think he did. He didn't score much, that's for sure. And he's been, of course, uh, what the pre was the previous game when he had the 51 against yes. the Wizards. That, Dr. Dan mentioned yesterday, I was not alone in mentioning this. However, part of the asininity, to use a word I've now used for the third time, somebody's asking me if it's a real word. It is. It's an awkward word, but I think it's real. Um, of not putting away the Wizards early was what? You got to play your starters the whole damn game. Yeah. And right. maybe you're fresher for Denver. There's also Denver had played the night before as well. I don't know how competitive their game was, but you're playing a terrible team, the Wizards. So if you Take if you don't allow it. yourself to get down by more than 20 early, um, then you're not playing 40 minutes and you're not having to finish the game. And you may not end up with 51, but the team, including you, would be in a better position to go to Denver and win a pretty important game that ult- – that basically gives you the lock. You are going to be the number one seed. That was if you find a one. way to beat Denver last night in Denver. And by the way, I Dr. Dan believed that for most of the first three quarters, the Wolves looked like the superior team. Now, they didn't, you could argue, take, they weren't ahead enough. Right. But they looked to me like, no, no, we're going toe-to-toe. 
And defensively, it looked like they were very locked in. And then the thing completely fell apart in the fourth quarter. And Denver did what it does. They executed time after possession after possession, and we didn't. Last one. It's time Can be a for walk-off. Dr. Dan's Inbox. Letters. Oh, we get letters. We get your letters every day. Dear Dr. Dan, I know you're a dog guy, but have you ever tried to oversee the herding of cats or a circus that devolves into an absolute bleep show? It's a lot harder than it looks. Sincerely, the Honorable L. Ito. And yes, I'm still alive, Gardzi. <laughs> oh, that's a good callback right there. Uh, I, I've got, I'll trump that decent callback with another one that just came into the uh, Bradshaw Bryant KFAN text line. From 612 guy or gal, dear Dr. Dan, just a reminder, Mother's Day is fast approaching. L. Veranda. L. (laughs) Veranda. Back in a minute. American Rock Duo, the Black Keys, are heading out on their international players tour. You won't want to miss when they take the stage at Target Center Sunday, November 10th. Tickets are on sale now. For more info, head over to KFAN.com, keyword calendar. We are a little bit behind schedule today, so uh, we will attempt to get uh, our guy Joe Friedberg on another day to uh, talk about the case that our guy Paul Bloom, another one of our guys, has uh, been covering. We had Bloom on yesterday and again today uh, regarding the um, now uh, guilty verdict on Nikolai Miu, uh, guilty of reckless homicide in the Apple River stabbing that got an awful lot of attention at the time. So we'll try to get him on um, another date. We're kind of up against the clock here. Clock management, not uh, the greatest by me. Today, um, Larry Mondello guy is checking in, and then we're going to play some sound that you uh, have uh, recovered from. Is it your guy Shams? Yes. Regarding the Tim Conley contract situation. By the way, for the record, well, I'll save it. I'll save it till we get uh, to that audio. Uh, Mondello guy is checking in uh, with a callback from earlier in the show. Interestingly enough, like Maury Amsterdam guy, I was also at Deja Vu during the infamous OJ Bronco chase. I remember because right after they turned it on the TV, I saw the legendary Mark Rosen walk through the door. I'll never forget because when he walked in, he said, good evening, everyone. And everyone there yelled, Rosie. (laughs) (laughs) That could be true. I rule nothing out. I know, it was the I 90s. Yeah, I mean, any, I don't know what any of you guys were up back. to. Well, that's, yeah, you don't want to know in some cases, believe me. Um, so, do we have to worry about the possibility? I mean, as if Wolves fans are already not distracted enough by the, as I refer to it, good old fashioned pissing match going on between Glenn Taylor and A Rod on one side and A Rod and, and Mark Laurie on the other. That's, by the way, going to play out now. We're going to have little stories that are going to leak yep. to the Jackals as they now play. This has become, with the leak yesterday, it's Glenn Taylor, I think, believing that A-Rod and Lori were winning the PR battle for public opinion. This was one of their cards they held back, I'm sure. And and that as a result, uh, that's why I think there's no mistaking the timing of the leakage, even though sadly... It came on the day when all the attention should have been about the accomplishments of his team preparing to go to Denver or already in Denver to take on the uh, uh, the Nuggets. But that's in the past now because uh, the Wolves did not take full advantage of it anyway. Um, we're going to – it's going to be a sideshow circus that's going to continue. And the beauty of it is, I guess, if you're a fan, you compartmentalize and say, well, I'm not going to let that rain on my parade. If they make a run, I'm going to enjoy – the making of uh, making a run, it's 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 Timberwolvesian though that there's a chance that some of it will will have to share media space with the latest developments in this particular story, this particular case. You just shake your head and you go, I guess in the end we really shouldn't be 
all of that surprised. But apparently, uh, Shams had some reporting. We've got, Gargi's got the audio of uh, uncovering some things regarding the Tim Conley contract. Tim Conley, of course, the president of basketball operations. Let's listen. Tim Conley spent nine years in Denver. He was an architect of that championship team, uh, this Denver Nuggets championship team. And then he goes to Minnesota in 2022. And you look at the top two teams in the Western Conference right now, his old Nuggets and now the Wolves. And Mark Laurie, Alex Rodriguez, they identified him. They targeted him. It was their vision to bring in Tim Connolly to Minnesota in 2022. And they committed really an unforeseen price in Minnesota in that marketplace. Five years, $40 million to bring in one of the best executives in the NBA. Glenn Taylor had to ultimately sign off on that. But it was really Rodriguez and Laurie's vision and ambition and drive to bring an executive of that caliber into Minnesota. And, they, and they've given him the free reins to go and transform this Timberwolves culture that we're seeing now. He goes out and makes the Rudy Gobert trade, signs Kyle Anderson free agency, trades for Mike Conley Jr., trades for Monte Morris. And we know the turbulence that now exists in this war for the Timberwolves between Glenn Taylor and Alex Rodriguez and Mark Lurie. And, and in all of that, I'm told Tim Connolly has an opt-out in his contract uh -uh. after the season. So after year two, it was supposed to line up with this ownership transfer with Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie taking this, this team over. But now with, with what we're seeing playing out between these two sides, I've reported Excuse on me? it. The fact that Glenn Taylor believes that they violated the contract. And obviously Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie being firm that they have all the necessary documentations, funding to have complete ownership of this team. Uh, there's no sign of this ending here anytime soon. But this is obviously someone the, the Wolves can't afford to lose. And the whole NBA is aware that Tim Connolly, in theory, could be a free agent and leave the Timberwolves, in theory. Um, but they could also rip his deal up and give him a new extension this offseason. Wow. I missed this totally. I don't know how I missed this story, but I did. Um, I don't know what to make of it. I mean, if, if, here's what's interesting. If you're Tim Conley, who do you want to be your owners? Because to a certain extent, I mean, in theory, I think you want to believe, and maybe I want to believe, it's the new kids on the block. With it, wow, uh, open-minded about doing all kinds of stuff, bringing some juice, the whole bit. On the other hand, if, if you're Tim Conley and you're also worried that they really don't have the financial wherewithal to, to not only pull this off, but to sustain it, then are you better off with the guy who has presided over all sorts of nonsense here, but has tended to stay out of it when it comes to personnel decisions and generally has been willing to spend? I don't think he's always been willing to spend to the degree that some people have suggested. Because you go back a few, uh, many, many years with K KG, there, there were a couple of occasions where I think that was called into question. But if he's the guy that you know the checks will clear, and you also know that he tends to stay out of the business of what a GM or a president of basketball operations does, is that who he wants? I, I, I don't know. Now, I texted him earlier, trying to be funny. Uh, give you the exact wording. You're not going to invoke the out in your contract, are you? And so far, not even the pithy response that you predicted. Something family-related, that he's at a kid's event? So far, it's crickets. Yeah. So I don't know but if that means... Maybe he's actually at a kid's event. Or maybe he can't tell a lie. He's an honest guy, maybe. And maybe there's something to that. I I don't think he wants to move again. I, I think it was enough of a battle with his family to get him here. I don't think he wants to go through that again, necessarily. And I guess... Well, could it depend in part on how things go? Because there, there, there's a there's another elephant in the room that was looming that suddenly people aren't talking about. Even before we get into this deal of whether there's concern about whether the new guys are going to try to slash the, the payroll, did we not hear over and over again that eventually, no matter who was owning the team, it wasn't going to be workable to keep all these contracts? And that, oddly enough, there was a chance that the odd guy out, not because you're rejecting him as a player, but just because of the practicalities of it, that Cat might end up having to be the odd man out. That you're, the, the franchise player clearly is the 22-year-old kid 
um, Anthony Edwards. You got a lot of other pieces that are expensive, but that you like. So my point is that was coming up as because it was that second apron stuff, right? And yeah. I don't know how much that's changed with the new deal, but um, the the point is there were there were sensible people wondering about that. Now that that didn't mean there was any guarantee, and maybe it largely depends on how far they go this year, right? I mean, if you go to the con, the, eventually we'll get to this because we have plenty of time yet till the postseason starts. But the cliched, uh, you know, pardon the interruption question. What constitutes a successful season for the Minnesota? How far yeah. do they have to go yep. to call this a successful season for the Minnesota Timberwolves? Um, off the top of my head, and this might be asking a lot when you look at how deep the conference is, I want to say win two series. Is that Ooh. greedy? I think the Some over people under say one. I series. think one and a half is the over under. I think okay. you're going to yeah. be right. It's it's is yeah. it more or less than one and a half? Because everybody agrees you got to get out of the first round. Everybody agrees you got to get out of the first. You round. absolutely have it's to gonna get be out a of buzz kill if you don't. Yeah. And then it, how does that enter into what you're going to do going forward with with? Because that might actually fully open the door to we got to make a personnel change. Uh, we, we we it worked better with the two big men we thought, but they did this when you factor in the finances of it, we're going to have to go in a different direction. And then in terms of Conley, you know, is he less interested? Or is he more determined? He's a guy who tends to, I think, want to finish a job. And I think he intended to finish the job in Denver. Yep. But then he, they, they, they came to him with an offer that he, you know, obviously could not refuse. A couple good texts have come in on this controversy. Uh, we'll include those as we wrap up a very controversial edition of uh, today's program. Man. Comedian and musician Fred Arneson is coming to the Fillmore on Sunday, April 28th. Don't miss out on a night of laughs when he brings his comedy for musicians, but everyone is welcome to her right here to Minneapolis. Tickets are on sale now. Secure yours at kfan.com keyword calendar. The show wrap brought to you by American Pressure, commercial grade pressure washers since 1970. It's the bumper to bumper show wrap. A couple of texts to wrap things up, including one from John in uh, Minneapolis. J uh, Dan, I just heard JG say these for the new guys. I'd be really careful about these new guys. Lori has a history of building businesses quickly and then flipping them for a lot of money, and that's what he's doing with the Wolves. He's buying an undervalued asset, and he will be flipping it in a few years for another big payday. Here's proof. His financial backer is a private equity firm, the Carlisle Group. Private equity firms want a quick return. On their investment, they don't want to pay an expensive luxury tax. They're going to flip this thing in a couple of years and walk away with a couple of billion dollars. That's possible. Not a bad thought. That's possible. Not but, a bad conspiracy. Um, it's worth uh, considering. Tim in San Diego, uh, personally, I don't care. I really don't think fans care about A-Rod and Lori because the team is winning. Yes, the press will report, but fans are talking... Uh, are, are are not talking about it. Your show is. Other shows are not. It's not as big a deal as your program is representing. Um, I'll just say that I'll... Uh, I have no idea what other shows are doing, but I will gladly um, pride myself or ourselves on continuing to report on this subject without any apology. I, I It's certainly not all we talk about, but the notion that a rare ownership kerfuffle of this size that ultimately determines who runs the team is not significant. I, I couldn't disagree more with that. It's It has all sorts of ramifications, even perhaps involving, like I said, who you have running, the who you have coaching the team, who you have in that general manager slash president of basketball operations slot as well. So if we're the only one, we'll continue to be the only one that's devoting uh, a certain measure of attention to it. And part of it for me has been just getting caught up on it because I was gone and the fact that we had another development in it uh, as recently as yesterday and they're going to continue to be developments. As I mentioned, I totally agree and I've said this several times, if you're a Wolves fan, you're thinking most about you'll be happily bought off if the team goes on or on a run. It's going to be very easy to put this in the back burner for now. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist as a story or isn't a legitimate uh, and very important story that has 
potentially huge ramifications for not just the short-term viability of this franchise being here, but the long-term uh, chance of it being here as well. All those things, I think, do indeed come into play. What is tomorrow, Friday? Yes. So tomorrow is going to be a busy show. We've got uh, Friday regulars, Gessling and Lavelle and Russo Radio, correct? Yes. Is that the plan right now? That's the plan of attack. Uh, by the way, a couple people have asked... Draft week, yes. Uh, on Wednesday of draft week, so the day before the draft, we do expect it to be a Wexler Wednesday. It's almost Wexler week. Marty Wexler the third makes these days only literally one appearance a year with us. Used to be two. Now it's one. And that is the scheduled day that the official draft nick of this particular program, the draft big knocker, the insider, will join. And I, I'm hoping to... To do the obvious, really just drill down on his reportage, his scouting on the quarterbacks, right? That's what this whole thing is about this year, is it not? It's everything. It's, it's got to be everything. Everything. We, um, just, we heard from Quazy today, it was 30 mi- 17 minutes yeah. on quarterbacks, essentially. Uh, by the way, Fan and Demand is going to follow us tonight, and then that will be followed by Frozen 4 action. Looks like Denver, looks like there's a good chance this game is going to go to OT. Denver and Boston U are tied one to one. We're down to about a minute to go in the um, third period at the X, correct? Yes, and you can hear that game right now on the plus. On the plus as we speak. And okay. After that game and after fan on demand and everything, you'll hear Boston College and Michigan. You can podcast right Ke- here on the fan. On the fan. Uh, you can podcast Kevin Seifert from today's show. He was at the Quasi Presser today. By the way, I'm told Quasi also joined PA, so I'm sure you can find that via you the can. podcast. And uh, you can podcast our converse- a-, a section conversation uh, on a verdict in the case, the Apple River case. That is, uh, I think that was at 430 with Paul Bloom. We also got some uh, remembrances from him on uh, the OJ, when the OJ uh, story broke. You guys are awfully young. He said, didn't he say he was... He was about to be in wrapping college. Wrapping up, yeah, he yeah. was finishing up high school. You were 12. Yes. When the whole story... I was almost 12. I was a month shy of my 12th birthday. Hard to believe, man. You guys, were just, you guys were just mere pups. I know. Is what you were. It was a, obviously a huge staple on the Chad Barrero show. The AJ trial. Well, that's I mean, how I think we followed it. it. it yeah. Just, uh, day after day after day. Uh, lots of good experts as well. Uh, did you see the New York Post cover in the wake of the news that O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76 years old? Oh, no, I'm worried. Here, here's your headline. Real killer is dead. Jarring? Yeah. Tabloidian? And as far as I'm concerned, 100% accurate. The truth cannot be controversial. I didn't think so. Uh Thanks for listening today. Thanks for texting today. I had a lot of really good texts. Thanks for your Dr. Dan contributions. You can podcast that if you missed it. That was at about 5.30. And uh, we'll start the whole thing over again tomorrow, beginning at 3 o'clock right here on The Fan. And with that, I need to go. I do appreciate your call, though. Thank you so much. Thank you for the memories. Thank you for the great time. We love you, Dan. Well, go Twins. Thank you for the, the airtime and... Uh, uh, I'll talk to you soon. When the job is done, we can go home now. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll-